Hey yo guys, I'm back here to give you my predictions for tonight's uh, uh, UFC 95 paper or not pay-per-view uh, show from uh, the O2 Arena in uh, London, England, which of course will be broadcast on tape delay on Spike TV and here in Canada on Rogers Sportsnet. And uh, if you're living in Canada, I would suggest you to watch it over or on Sportsnet rather than Spike, uh, not just in Spike. I normally I like the Spike network in that aspect, but there's less advertising and you get more of the fights, which is what you want to see. And my predictions as well for tonight's boxing pay-per-view of uh, Miguel Cotto versus Michael Jennings and Kelly Pavlik versus uh, Marco Antonio Rubio. So anyways, uh, let's get to the predictions here. I guess before I do get into that, uh, if you still want to send questions on you know, pro wrestling, mixed martial arts, inbox, email, or uh, MySpace inbox. Anyways. Uh, let's start off with the boxing here. Um, a pretty interesting night of fights in this, and the aspect that we got two, you know, uh, boxing stars trying to make the uh, comeback uh, after coming off, you know, two losses. Um, although Kodos can still be put into question due to the Antonio Margarito hand wraps. Um, anyways, let's start off with the first bout, which will be from. Uh, I think this pay per view is kind of interesting. It's got the, you know. Starcade, you know, 85 and WrestleMania 2 type feel where they're doing it from two different locations. Uh, the first, the main fight here that I'll predict, the first fight I'll predict here is uh, Pavlik versus uh, Rubio, which is taking place, I believe, in, in, you know, Cle in Cleveland or in the Nationwide Arena in Columbus, Ohio. I believe that's where it's taking place. It's taking place in the state of Ohio, I know that for sure, but um, which is a you know, big thing as Ohio's a big boxing town and Pavlik's from there, so uh, yeah, anyways. Um, you know, Pavlik, he, you know, he's been, you know, reeling after for a couple months now, about four months since, you know, he got absolutely picked apart uh, by Bernard Hopkins in the catchweight 170 bout. Um, really, you know, a lot of people forget in that bout that, you know, he definitely didn't have the height, he didn't have the power, and he didn't have the experience uh, that, you know, Bernard Hopkins had. He goes back to middleweight, you know, he's defending his uh, WBC and WBO middleweight championship belts. He's got all those things now back at middleweight. Um... So I think that's something that we forget about, you know, just a simple little one-fight loss, you know, that really, I guess, didn't mean anything. It was just, you know, a thing to get, you know, boxing going again, which it did, and, you know, help re-energize energize, uh, uh, Bernard Hopkins' career even more so. Um, but, yeah, anyways, back to the fight, um, you know, I think, you know, that, you know, Pavlik will use the height. He's going to use his power that he has. Um, he, you know, he's got a lot of power, and he, you know, he's got an insane reach for a guy at middleweight. You know, his opponent in uh, Marco Antonio Rubio, he's someone that, you know, likes to slug it out. He became the number one contender on the undercard of that same pay-per-view between uh, Hopkins and Pavlik. Uh, so, you know, he's, he's fought a lot. He's got a lot of activity for a You know, he's got a good cardio. I mean, he's fought a lot. He's, I believe he's fought, you know, he's had nine fights within, you know, the last year. So that's a lot of fights, and it shows that, you know, his cardio should be good. But the thing that I don't like about Rubio here in this fight is he likes to fight close. Even when, you know, he's clearly up on his points or whatever, he likes to fight in close, you know, you know, keep throwing those hands out there. Which I think with Pavlik, that isn't good. I don't want to be that close or whatever with Pavlik's power. And, you know, even, you know, where you think you're at a safe distance in fighting, Pavlik's reach is going to shock you. Um, so how do you look at this fight? Well, you see, I think we'll get an exciting fight. You know, with the first couple of rounds, will probably be exciting. But eventually, I just think that Pavlik will overtake and probably try and finish early as, you know, he's coming off that loss to Hopkins. He wants to prove that he's still made of it. He's still the man at middleweight. And so that's why I'm, you know, a Kelly Pavlik probably knockout and probably the or TKO in the 8th or 7th round. That's where I'm going to go with this one. And I think Rubio will just get, you know, battered and battered. And eventually Pavlik will just, you know, lay the hammer down, get the TKO victory. And then we move over to the other bout, which is uh, Miguel Cotto versus uh, Michael Jennings, uh, which this one's taking place at the Mecca of Boston at Madison Square Garden. As I said earlier, you know, Cotto, and not only just Cotto, but a lot of guys are, you know, who have had losses to uh, Antonio Margarita. Well, now those losses can kind of come off as... Uh, the whole hand wrap instance, so I think that's going to be a key aspect, and you can tell kind of from interviews that, you know, Cotto's maybe a bit upset about that. He may have lost due to uh, unfortunate cheating there from Antonio Margarito. So, how do you look at this? You know, Cotto wants to, you know, reestablish himself as a superstar. You know, he's fighting for a vacant championship. 
Uh, really, you know, his opponent in Michael Jennings, you know, he's a top contender. Yeah, but really, if you look at his record, who's he really fought? And absolutely no one. You know, his management's kind of, you know, put him against people that he's clearly better than to get into a championship contention. And I don't want to be that guy, that, that guy who, you know, fought people that, you know, you're better than. And then, you know, when you get into there with a real championship fight, you're underclassed a lot. And that's where I see Michael Jennings being absolutely underclassed. Cotto, he's going to have, you know, the roar of the Madison Square Garden fans are clearly going to be behind him because of the huge Puerto Rican population uh, in uh, New York, and they will obviously be there supporting Cotto. He's going to have that. I'm going to expect an early TKO here um, from Miguel Cotto, but then again, you can look, well, Michael Jennings, you know, a lot of people aren't expecting him to win. You know, if he doesn't, if he gets, you know, killed in the first fight, we expect that, you know, and he's got, he's got nothing to lose, so you can look at it that way. Um, as, you know, this, you know, it's a big scenario, you know, Buster Douglas had nothing to lose when he knocked out Mike Tyson, um, you had, uh, uh, Shannon Briggs against Lennox Lewis, who, he nearly beat Lennox for the, uh, championship, I believe, in 1998, the heavyweight championship, so, I mean, he's got nothing to lose, but I just still think Cota's gonna overmatch him and overpower him and just, you know, batter him down and, you know, uh, reestablish himself and, you know, be the Miguel Cotto of old, you know, the one that was, you know, knocking Zab Judah to the mat back at Madison Square Garden. So that's how I'm going to take this one. So those are my picks. Yes, I'm picking the two stars, but I just think that they have so much to prove, and I think they can have the ability to do it. Um, but it should be a great night of fights, and I don't know how people can say that Bob is dead when, you know, a lot of interesting fights. Um, moving over to the realm of mixed martial arts, we start off, we have another free card here on uh, on Spike TV and Rogers Sportsnet with... Uh, UFC 95, and really a lot of people are hating on this card that, you know, it's not that good. Well, I would like to say, have you checked the card? The main event really should be a good fight um, between Diego Sanchez and uh, Diego Knight Sanchez and Joe Daddy Stevenson. You also got, you know, the number one contender fight for the middleweight championship between uh, Wilson Govea and Nate the Great Marquardt. Um, you also got, uh, you know, Josh, Josh Koscheck on there against uh, uh, Paulo yeah, Tiago, I mean, you know, that's just a good fight and all. And, you know, we start things out on the night with the first fight, which is Dan Hardy versus Rory Markham. Uh, this fight, to me, looks like, um, <clears throat> I believe Markham is trying to bait Dan Hardy into a stand-up battle by him questioning, you know, his striking power. I don't think you want to do that, as I think Dan Hardy has really strong, you know, power. He's a good stand-up fighter as it is, but I don't think he wants to be baited into that. Um... You know, Markham, he's a good, you know, he can fight on the ground, but he's not as good, as skilled as, you know, uh, uh, Dan Hardy is. I think Dan Hardy is just, you know, a star and makes him a better mixed martial artist all rounded. So that's one my prediction will be. I will take Dan Hardy to get a uh, unanimous decision victory. I think, you know, him on the uh, in the stand-up department, he's clearly, he's better than him, uh, better than uh, Rory Markham. I think he can, you know, even potentially, you know, use a knockout or whatever. He can take it to the ground and, you know, uh, excel there more so than uh, uh, Rory Markham. So my prediction is Dan Hardy. Uh, and that should be an exciting fight to get things kicked off. Uh, let's not hate on anything. Then we go to the next fight, which actually is a pretty interesting bout in the middleweight division as we have the man returning to the UFC in check, Chow Sonnen versus the up-and-coming and probably the best jiu-jitsu practitioner in mixed martial arts in Damian Maya. Um, we, you know, we have uh, Sonnen. He's got all this momentum coming in. You know, he has a lot of things coming in, you know, from the WEC and, you know, uh, a lot of good fights, you know, a controversial loss to Paulo Tiago, to Paulo, Paulo Filo, I should say, and then, you know, the horrible fight, you know, where he absolutely dominated and came in 100% prepared and Filo, not at all. Um, we all remember that, but he's going in there against Damian Maia, who, as I said, one of the best practitioners of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in the world. I still think, I think he's the best in mixed martial arts, as I stated earlier. So one of Sonnen's big expertise here is wrestling. I don't think he wants to be the guy that takes the fight to the ground. But like I've predicted in the Damian Maya versus uh, Nate the Rock Quarry fight back, I believe, for, I mean, UFC 91, I believe that's where I, I believe that, yeah, that show. Quarry eventually was going to go to the ground. I eventually see Damian Maia taking this fight to the ground. If Sonnen, you know, can use his wrestling to get out of these holds, you know, out of these, you know, dangerous positions, you know, mounted, sign mount, whatever, you know, then it can be interesting. He's going to want to keep the fight standing because that's where Maya's weakness is. But I just think eventually 
Maya takes it to the ground and gets a submission in the er late portions of the third round. Prediction, Damian Maya. I don't know how you can predict it against Damian Maya. He's riding on a hot streak, and he's just an Anaconda in there. He chokes you out. He gets a submission however he wants. Damian Maya. Then we go to the fight that, you know, is probably the, the number one contender fight for the middleweight championship, and that's uh, Nate the Great Marport versus Wilson Govea. You know, both these guys are about equal, I would say, you know, and skill-wise, you know, both can do good, great stand-up, both are great on the ground, but how do you look at this? I'm going to look at this one in conditioning, as go we all remember his fight on the uh, ultimate fight, a uh, tough season finale, uh, season eight finale, where he didn't make weight, you know, I believe he came in two or three pounds overweight against his fight with uh, Jason the Athlete McDonald, got the victory, but, you know, definitely came in overweight, so that still leaves me to question, you know, his conditioning for a middleweight division, still think he's a really strong fighter in that division, but still the cardio thing is an issue. Mark Hart, we all know he can come in weight, he's got great Great stand-up, great, you know, uh, on the ground, uh, former King of Pancrase, seven-time King of Pancrase champion, uh, so, uh, in the middleweight division, uh, so this is both a really interesting fight, so how do I break this down, like I said, cardio, I don't know if Govea can go the, uh, into deep water with Marquardt in this fight, um, so how do, I'm gonna take it, probably Nate Marquardt, uh, s probably split decision, if anything, but I think, you know, he can probably get a submission, or, you know, just gas uh, uh, Govea to, onto his back and, you know, just not be active and the uh, referee have to make the stoppage. But I would take a split decision as I think, you know, Govea isn't that kind of fighter to just give up. I mean, even if he's gassed, I think he's still going to try and give it 110. So, but I'm going to take Nate Marquardt via split decision. Then we go to the next fight, which is a very interesting one, is we uh, Josh Koscheck making his return fight, or his next fight in the UFC against a newcomer who a lot of people don't know about, and that would be Paulo Tiago. Uh, really, um, Paulo Tiago is a, gr a great uh, ground fighter in uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I mean, you know, he didn't really have a lot of strong competition in Brazil, but uh, a lot of his fights with the jungle fight promotion in Brazil, you know, he had a, a, a their promotion he had a little bit more competition was able to get the you know victories um but really how do you look at this one well Kostek clearly doesn't want to take this to the ground he does not want to use his great wrestling at all in this fight if I'm Josh Kostek because I think he's going to get subbed if he go if they go to the ground I think what he should do is use something he's really improved on and I definitely his last fight proved it his improving stand-up I mean he's got a lot of power knows how to do the stand-up I mean hell we all remember what uh, happened to Yoshida at uh, the uh, UFC fight for the Troop Show. Absolutely a devastating knockout there. Um, so how do I take this one? I think that, you know, uh, Josh Koscheck's athleticism will lead him to a victory. Uh, probably probably a split decision as well. So I'm going to take uh, Josh Koscheck via split decision. And then the main event, we have the debuting at lightweight, which actually bodes really for, you know, maybe Diego, for Diego, you know, to be a superstar, it's Diego the Nightmare Sanchez versus Joe Daddy Stevenson. A lot of people are already writing off Joe Daddy Stevenson due to his you know, inability to beat, you know, the superstar type fighter in, uh, you know, a BJ Penn or a Kenny Florian. Um, he's going up here against Diego uh, the Nightmare Sanchez, who, you know, makes his debut here at 155. Um, he definitely has all the tools in the world to... Uh, Superstar at lightweight and eventually, you know, get a, a chance at a title shot. Um, but I think he's gonna have to wait a while. But the thing, once again, just like you know, Govea versus Marquardt, cardio. I mean, excuse me, conditioning comes into play here. Um, you know, back in December, Diaz was walking around at about 190, 190 pounds. Um, you know, he was just, you know, the other a couple weeks ago at 162. Um, so and then you know he made weight at 146, but. I don't know how well his cardio and conditioning will be in the later portions of the round. I think definitely Stevenson has the ability to push the fight to at least the second round. So that's why my upset pick will be Joe Daddy Stevenson, as he's been in this weight class a hell of a lot of times. Diego's making his first attempt here. I don't know how well his body's going to react at all to the weight division. So I'm going to take Joe Daddy Stevenson to be my upset pick and, you know, prove that he's still elite fighter. I mean, he needs this one more than anything. And Joe Daddy seems really, really confident. I mean, he's left, you know, he was training in isolation, um, away from his family. Um, a lot of people are still, well, I mean, Diego for sure thought he was train, still training, you know, in Vegas near his, with his family, or near his family at least. Um, 
So I think that could bode well, you know, in the surpriseness. Uh, I think Joe Daddy wants to prove that he can beat an elite fighter in a Diego Sanchez. I think he's going to do it. Um, how do I think he'll do it? I think he'll take, you know, a, a unanimous, or probably, you know what, he'll probably take a, a submission at the end, you know, th early third round. That's how I'll take it. Joe Daddy Stevenson, submission third round. Other than that, that's it for me. Definitely would love your feedback on, you know, tonight's or predictions or preview, whatever you want to call it, on tonight's uh, boxing pay-per-view as well as UFC 95. Definitely leave your comments in the comment section. If you have questions, whatever, send them. Anyways, that's it for me. I am out. Peace.